I just spent some time looking at some Doberman forms online and uh, there are a lot of people out there asking about owning a Doberman while working full time. Now, there are also a lot of people responding to those comments that are a little bit elitist about owning a Doberman. Let me give you some examples. One gal writes that she has a loving home and she really wants to own a Doberman. And uh, Sam on the forum writes, Dobies are companion dogs. They do not like to be left at home for long periods of time. I wouldn't recommend anyone that works full time to get a Doby. Now, here's another one. Uh, this was a comment on my website, DobermanPlanet.com. This gal writes, no one in all caps should purchase such an intelligent, high energy, large dog and leave it alone the entire day. The only reason I got a Doby puppy is among other things, I'm home 90% of the time. Here's another one on some website forums. Another gal is asking if she can own a Doberman while working full time. And Anna responds, I have to be brutally honest and say, you'd be better off getting a cat. This is a 10 plus year commitment you'll be making. Ouch. Now that sounds like almost nobody is good enough to own a Doberman. Man, wouldn't it be nice if we just all had the life where we could just lounge around and, and float around in the pool with nothing to worry about except for playing with our dog and taking care of him and never having to go to work. Well, that's just not a reality. Most of us work full time. And these people that have this attitude, like those that I just read, um, I call them the, that attitude a little bit elitist, right? Nobody's good enough to own a doorman. That's just not true. There's plenty of loving homes out there and loving families who could make a, a great home for a doorman. And to turn them away just because they're normal and they work full time, I think that's just a travesty. So I'm going to be a little controversial here and say that you can absolutely own a Doberman while working full time. And I'm going to explain to you exactly why I think that, why Dobermans make great dogs for people who work full time. And then I'm going to go on to explain to you how you can live your life normally and how you can best set up your dog for success if you got the type of life like most of us do, where you got to go off to work uh, sometimes 40 hours a week. So yes, it would be ideal to be home 24 seven with your dog, but it's just not realistic for most of us. And frankly, it's just not necessary. Here's the deal. I know tons of people who have Dobermans that are happy and healthy, and they live in a home where the owners work full time, even same hours that they're gone, eight hours a day, both the parents are gone or both people in the house are gone and the dog's there by themselves and they thrive and they're fine. Is it ideal? Of course not, it's not ideal, but it can absolutely be done. All you gotta do is put a little extra thought into the setup of, of what you leave for your dog, what environment you leave them in, and a little bit extra um, thought and process into making sure your dog is ready for that and they can do absolutely great. So I've heard the argument many times that Dorbins are bred to be people dogs and they need the human interaction. So therefore you can't own one if you work full time. Um, now I will agree that they are people dogs and they are, I mean, they're bred for personal protection, right? They're super focused on their owners. They, uh, they do need that interaction with their owners, absolutely. But I think we're selling the Doberman breed short if we don't also acknowledge that they're an incredibly intelligent breed, they're very adaptable, they're uh, willing to please, and they just wanna know what is expected of them so that they can please their owners and do right by their owners. And I feel like we need to acknowledge those traits and that those traits do make them great candidates uh, to be fine when you leave them alone uh, even for a full day of work. So they can be great dogs. You can be absolutely successful owning one if you work full time. Just put a little extra thought and I'll help you through that process here. I've also heard the argument that you need to be home full time with a dog when they're still a puppy. So about under one year of age. Although I absolutely will agree that a puppy, especially a doorman puppy, does need some extra attention when they're younger. Um, much more than an adult Doberman, absolutely. Uh, but most of us cannot take one year off of work to raise a dog. So they needed to be set up correctly when you leave for work. So um, they probably need to be contained, right? Because the dog isn't trustworthy yet as far as um, he may destroy some things in your house as, as a young pup, might get into some things he's not supposed to get into, maybe some dangerous things that could harm him or hurt him or might swallow some things when they're still kind of learning to feel, especially in that teething stage, they're always biting new things and, 
and try and chew on new things and swallow different objects. And so, and, and they're not potty trained yet. So in the beginning, they probably definitely need to be contained somehow, whether that's a crate or a, just a penned off area inside your house. Um, so there is a rule that as a puppy, uh, a dog, uh, and this, this goes pretty well for Dorbans too, can hold their bladder about one hour for every month old that they are. So a two month old can hold their bladder for two hours, three month old for three hours, four month, four hours, and so on. That's just a good general rule of thumb to kind of help you through uh, figuring out how long you can try to leave your dog alone before taking them out and uh, potting them. Now, you do want to make sure these dogs, as a puppy, um, that they get uh, let out to go potty so they don't get used to going to the bathroom in their house. Um, but you can have a setup, though, to try to um, make it conducive so that they can they can develop correctly and learn to pee in the right times and the right spots. Here's my setup with my dog when he was a puppy. I have a big section of tile in my house. Um, I used a, a pen. They're like, uh, you can get them online at Amazon. You can get them at pet stores. They're a, a mobile uh, uh, wire fence that can kind of make a little fenced off area. And I use that to fence off a little area on my tile. Inside that penned area, I put a really nice, comfortable bed for him, uh, very soft and plush. I also put down pee pads pretty much everywhere, <laughs> which is important. Uh, two water bowls. Now, the reason why I did two water bowls, it's, it, it's pretty important, especially as a puppy, because uh, a lot of times they'll play in the water, they'll spill it. And if they spill it in the first hour when you're gone, um, that, that can be an issue, obviously. Then they won't have water the rest of the day. So I did two water bowls in two different sides of the of the, um, the, Kent, the penned off area and, uh, plenty, plenty of toys. Uh, you got to keep them busy. You got to keep them entertained. Uh, there's a lot of toys out there. Uh, you even might want to consider some of those puzzle toys, um, that they have out there for dogs that really help, um, intelligent dogs like Doberman stay entertained for a long period of time. In fact, those are great when they're adults too. Um, I'll put a link down in the description for some of those toys that I'm talking about. So you, can, so you can see what I'm talking about with those puzzle toys. Um, and I even used a fake grass area that I um, instructed him to pee at um, when I could. Uh, and he, he kind of used that hit or miss when he was young. He got a little bit better as he got older, but um, that was my setup. At four months old, I would not leave my Doberman alone for more than four hours. So. I did not have the type of job where I could come home from work. So what I did was I hired a neighborhood kid um, for a small fee a day. I think it was like uh, 10 bucks a day or something like that. Maybe it was even $5 a day. It was a while ago. Uh, to come twice during the day while I was at work and walk him, uh, you know, check his little pen area, make sure that he doesn't need more water or need something cleaned up or whatever. Um, he would also play with him, give him some interaction and try and take him out to go to the bathroom as well. Uh, so that's one option. There are doggy daycares out there as well. I don't think those are as, as good because one, they don't get used to being home in your house alone, and two, they're very expensive. Um, so if you can find a family member, maybe someone who lives nearby or even better yet in your house that can come partway through the day, or if you have a job where you live close enough where you can go on your lunch break for a brief moment of time uh, to play with your dog and, and check them real quick and then rush back to work, that would be fantastic. Um, or find a dog sitter, a dog walker, or like I did, a trusted kid in the neighborhood uh, to come by and, and help you out. You really just need to get through that first year of their life, maybe even less than that. Um, now, one, oh, one other important thing I forgot to mention, before I left for work, I try and tire him out a little bit. You know, he's a puppy, he loves to play. I try to tire him out, play some fetch, play some, throw some things for him, um, run around a little bit in the backyard and get him nice and tired. Uh, and that seemed to help a lot to avoid some separation anxiety issues, to avoid the barking, avoid the whining, that kind of thing. Um, he, did, he did really well. Um, I put him in his pen about 10 minutes before I left. That way it wasn't like, hey, boom, in your pen and I'm leaving and I'm gone. I put him in his pen 10 or 15 minutes before I leave so he'd kind of calm down, lay down, relax, and then I'd go. It seemed to be a much smoother process when I would do that. So that's as a puppy. That's probably the most complicated. Now as they become an adult, say after about one year of age, then you can 
uh, slowly start to see how, how trustworthy they are outside of their pen while you're gone, right? So start by just leaving for 10 minutes at a time, um, 20 minutes, go for a walk around the block, see how they do. And then you can slowly increase the time and kind of see um, how, how they do on their own and, and slowly you can add more and more trust until you can be gone for a whole day. Now, when I mentioned that they can hold their uh, bladder for one hour for every month old that they are, that goes, that's true up to about six months. When they get to six months of age, they can hold it for about six hours, and that's about where they will stay as an adult. I've noticed Dobermans take a little bit more than that, so maybe seven months to get to uh, six hours or so of, of holding their bladder. That's just what I've seen with Dobermans as opposed to other breeds. And they really can't hold it more than that. That's pretty much what an adult dog will be able to hold their bladder for six hours. So in order to, to graduate from that puppy stage where you have them penned up and you gotta be home all the time to leaving them home for a full eight hour work day, you, they gotta have a way to potty themselves or go to the bathroom themselves. Uh, for me, the key was a doggy door and getting him confident using it so he could let himself out in the backyard and then bring himself back in when he was done with his business. Once I got that dog, doggy door in, once he got comfortable using it, um, that was the key for me to allow me to transition from the puppy stage where I had to worry about him constantly to, well, okay, now he can pee himself. And now I've slowly worked up the amount of time that I've been gone on these smaller little trips, like on the weekends and stuff to now we're getting close to, you know, an eight hour length of time that I'm gone and he's fine. Um, that was the key so that we could transition from that point to a full eight hour workday being gone and him uh, in the house by himself. So as an adult, they're great. He is awesome now. Um, I still do the two water bowl setup. I still give him plenty of toys. That's really important with Dobermans. They're very intelligent dogs. They need to be entertained. Puzzle toys are great. Uh, again, I'll, I'll help you out a little bit with that. There'll be a link in the description. Um, make sure you look around for any dangerous chemicals or uh, things that they can get into, things that they can chew on that might hurt them. Um, keep cleaners and, and bleach and all types of things, all those things, keep them away where they can't reach them up high or something like that. Um, any, if you have like a shop area or something where there might be motor oil or antifreeze, antifreeze is a huge killer of dogs. Just make a lap around and make sure everything is safe for your dog before you start trying to leave them alone unpenned. That, that's pretty important. Um, <clears throat> Another option, which I think is really, really nice. I didn't really have it with Cooper, or at least I didn't know about it if it was around, are some of these remote cameras. They, they sell these um, where you can set up a camera in your house uh, and remotely from work or from wherever with your smartphone, you can see your dog, you can hear your dog. Some of them let you interact with your dog. You can use a little laser light and play with your dog. You can even, some of them will dispense a treat when you hit a button on your cell phone. Uh, they're a pretty cool way to keep an eye on your dog and kind of make sure that uh, you can trust them or make sure that they're not getting into trouble. Um, so those cameras might be an option as well. That's it. That's how I did it. Um, no matter how well prepared you are or how carefully you follow some of these steps that I, or these tips that I've given you, um, you may still absolutely run into some separation anxiety with your dog. Um, you will know that because they'll have problems just screaming and crying while you're gone. Your neighbors might say they're barking all the time. They might be destructive and kind of chewing up things in their penned area. Um, those are signs of separation anxiety. So no matter how careful you are, that still might happen. I did find for me, there was one specific, super simple key that I didn't know about and uh, that I wish I'd known earlier that really helped my dog get over his uh, anxiety issues. So if you go to dobermanplanet.com slash alone, again, dobermanplanet.com slash alone, uh, about most of the way down the page, three quarters of the way down the page, you'll see right there the key that I found that absolutely broke my dog of his separation anxiety issues. It's something super simple I could do. And uh, yeah, so it, check that out because again, no matter how careful you are, uh, you may run into some of these separation anxiety issues. Guys, thanks for watching. If you do me a favor and hit that like button and subscribe so you get notified of future videos I do, that'd be fantastic.